My name is Margot Duncan and I live in Warren Park and my grandfather was George Finley Walmsley. Uh, Jordy was 14 or 16 years old when he left a very poor family in Pollockshaw, Glasgow and came to Canada in 1888. We believe that he lived on the prairies, but eventually migrated to northern Ontario where he either was in a mining or a logging camp. He met my great uncle, Oz's mom, and I guess Jordy had no place to go for Christmas because Oz brought him home. He met my grandmother, Mabel mom, a cousin of Somerset mom. He had a, an old, a younger brother, Malcolm, uh, and a sister, Jessie Agnes. He signed up, although he was too old, he signed up for the military and was rejected in Toronto, signed up again lying about his age in Niagara Falls and got into the Black Watch. The government offered British subjects one week to visit their family. So he went back um, to the British Isles and spent a week with his family and then was sent to the front into France where he was shot and then repatriated to Port McNichol. Jordy kept in regular contact with his brother Malcolm after World War I. I'm not certain whether the contact was prior to World War I or if he had uh, tracked them down after he got the opportunity to spend a week with them. And uh, I know that my mother or my aunt contacted uh, Jordy's brother to let him know when Jordy died in 1958. We had always thought that uh, Jordy was a Bernardo boy. They were enslaved children, they were indentured to the families here in Canada, and they were led to believe that either their parents didn't want them or that their parents had died. Often this was not true. But Jordy did have contact with his family and did know where they were, so that's why we think that he was perhaps not a Bernardo. My mother and my brother both wanted to go to Scotland and neither ever did. Here we go again. We lost two brave men uh, this week and uh, firefighters again. Captain Bill Duncan, Kitchener firefighter. Uh, Bill, he was a hockey guy, let me tell you. So my sister and I decided to take their ashes and put them on Malcolm's grave. In July of 2017, my sister Pat, her husband Bill, my daughter Shanna, and two grandsons, Kieran and Braden, went to Glasgow. We found the cemetery in Pollock Shaw, which is divided. We went to the one side, the smaller and older cemetery first. So we were unsuccessful there and we decided to go over to the other side. There was a big sign and it said, for maintenance issues, call this number. I called her and in seconds, she knew exactly that Malcolm was in Section D and his grave marker, but not what row he was in. So we fanned out, all of us, and we went up and down the rows. And uh, you know, the, the gravestones, the headstones, were toppled over, some face down, some you know, back up, covered in moss, overgrown. Everybody was getting a little tired. The little kids had been good to this point, but they were done. So we decided to walk four rows in and down to the middle and just, put, just sprinkle the ashes in at least the middle of Section D. My sister Pat was drawn to one of the toppled headstones and she went over and she started pulling the moss away and as she was pulling the moss away it said Malcolm Walmsley. <laughs> 